TII Technical Education Systems, Teaching Technology for Tomorrow. Okay, so in this video what we're going to show is the basic startup of your Siemens TIA Portal V117 using the TII Technical Education Training System with the Siemens S7-1200 and the Simtech HMI. Now to get started on this project what we need to do is first go ahead and open up our TII portal v113 through the link on your desktop. Now this is a pretty powerful program so it can take a couple of seconds to log in and uh, we'll just wait for this to go ahead and boot up. Once it's booted up we're gonna have the option to create a new project or go in and open up a previously completed project. In this case we're going to start to work on a new project so we're going to select the create new project and we're going to give it a name. So we're going to call this unit X procedure 1. Now if you want to save this in a very specific spot we're going to have to select a path. So for here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this in the automation CM284-S2 folder that you've created and I'll just save it in there and hit OK. As you can see here my path is now changed. The author is Siemens under here if you wanted to put your own name that's totally fine or you can put whatever your teacher is indicating. If it's just leave it at Siemens, that's fine. Whatever. If you want to add a comment to this new to this project, you can at this time. I don't. Right now, it's not necessary. So we're just going to go ahead and select create. Now, while this is creating the project, what it's doing is it's setting up a path to where it's saving and getting everything going here. Now the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and configure a device once that's up. Now this brings you to the show all devices. Now we want to add a new device and this is where you can pick between an HMI and a controller. Now we're going to just put in the PLC right now so we select controller. You go to um, you go to the Simtech S7 1200s. You expand this out you go to the unspecified CPU 1200. This is by far the most common way to find what PLC is out there. So we click here. This has gone out and defined what it is, what version it is, and we select Add. Now this will actually bring you to the project view. From here what we need to do is you can see they've put a generic PLC out there. So what we want to do is we want to send out uh, we want this to go out and configure to the connected device. So we're going to select detect. Alright, and we want to get this set up. Now, for now, everybody may be networked into this PLC a little bit differently. We are actually using a USB, um, USB converter to Ethernet. So we're going to select the PN-EI. Come here. Oops. Come here. Select the USB to Ethernet adapter and we're going to start the search. Now as you can see when it's starting this is a question mark that's rotating and it's going around looking for any device on the Ethernet that it can connect to. And as you can see it found two originally right here. Okay, two possible devices and it's retrieving the information and since it's looking for a PLC it says PLC1 S7-1200 and that's exactly what we're looking for and it even gives you the MAC address which has been assigned to it when uh, it was created. Now this is the scan information retrieved completed so we're good to go. Now if you want to make sure you're connected to the correct PLC what you need to do you can select that you can select the flash LED right here and there are three little run stop air and maintenance out there and they will flash to let you know that you've connected to the P the correct PLC the one you want this is very useful if you have multiple PLCs on the same Ethernet network 
So we'll turn this off. That will actually disengage those blinking lights and we're ready to continue on. So here we want to select detect. Hit yes. This will just take a minute. Now this is an initial IP address was added. You want to add this? Yep, absolutely. Yours might not come up with that if it's uh, just if if your computer has an Ethernet port. So now you can see here that the PLC that is there has been located and identified. So I can come in here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, and I'm going to just take an extra step here. Grab this, drag it over because we're not too concerned with this. Minimize this side here. And I want to zoom this in. I like to zoom in to about 400 because that gives me a real good image of all of my specific I.O. And that's going to come in handy here in just a little bit. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and expand in our program blocks and click on double click on the main. Now that main is going to appear down here in this bar which will allow you to switch back and forth between the screens and we're going to make a real quick start stop station here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag the tools out here that I need with the IO so I'm going to click here select this bring this over to here bring this up to here I'm starting my uh, basic start stop station now to identify what address you need and what everything is linked to the Siemens PLC gives you a lot of different options to do that now fortunately what we've done on the TII trainer is we've actually identified all of the addresses underneath which switch it is and you can verify those too if you're unsure so if I push this normally open green button you can see that there's a light latching that's turning on with it to indicate that that one is true okay and you can see they kinda of go down the line and what this tells you is we have four normally open switches four normally closed so we're gonna go ahead and use this address right here for our stop button so I come over here I select I zero dot four oops that's a mistake sorry what we knew is we need to create a tag for this so we're gonna call this start button and hit enter come here make this a stop button and since we're using a normally closed button we have the ability to just use the examine if closed instruction here we're going to label this an output and we will just come up to here and identify whichever output we want to use so in this case we'll just use the left red so we'll identify this as output for now and now we need to tag these and there is a number of ways to do this but I want to show you the easiest way to do it right now so we come up here and we select split editor space vertically and what that does is it pulls up the two screens right here so the PLC and the actual program that you started creating so I'm gonna grab my start button my start buttons address is I0.0 .0. so I click and I drag this over I drag this over and I drop it right here and the start button is tied directly to this the stop button is going to be IO.2 so we'll grab this drop it over here you can see our start button and stop button they have now been tagged you can see here that the address is appearing um, the address appears right above the name that you created for it, the tag so now the output we're just going to go to QO.0 drop this in here and we're ready to rock and roll we're going to turn the split screen off this will bring this back now we need to tag this the same way so if we start oops if we start typing in output over here it will appear the tag will appear with the address click on here you hit enter and now we're ready to download to the PLC to see how it works so I click here download to device So here we have the PLC load will not perform because of precondition are not met. It's totally fine. 
stop modules. The stop mod uh, the modules are stopped for downloading to this device. So what we need to come here is select here and just select stop all and then we can select load right here. Now right now you can see this is it's downloading to here. Everything's ready to go. Do we want to start everything? Yes we do. So we'll go ahead and hit finish. And you can see here load completed, zero errors and zero warnings. That means everything is right where we want it to be. So we'll minimize this so we can see the um, program that we created. And if we want to monitor this in real time, which is preferred out in the field, what we can do is we can come and turn the monitor on. So we select this and this will allow us to see what is actually happening out in the field. A very useful tool. So we come over here, you can see green means go, so our stop button is activated. I deactivate it, turning it off. That will cut and the line will go from green to blue, meaning that the logical continuity has been cut off. So I come up here and I hit the start button. The output has turned on. The memory has latched in. We have a basic latching circuit, start stop station, however you want to refer to it. And you can see that the output here is now turned on. The LED here telling you that it has been latched on, and the output here has turned on as well. You're, it, you, you have now created a basic start stop station. Now you come here, you hit the stop button, stop button turns off, the LED on your PLC turns off, and your output here turns off. All right. And that's, that's how simple it is to start and create a new PLC program from scratch. So we're going to come here now. We're ready to go offline. So we can either turn the monitor off or we can hit the go offline button right here. We'll select the go offline button and you'll see that it will disengage, turn everything off. And if we wanted to start modifying the program, adding in new networks, whatever it is, we're ready to go. But one of the things that we can also do from here is we can go ahead and come in and start a and create a comment. So this is a start stop station start stop station for the output. Alright, and there you go. That's how it runs. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.